thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machines SE5A. This kit comes on six sheets of laser cut balsa. It includes a standard rubber loader, decals, and the tissue required for covering. To begin assembling the model, you will require the parts list for numbering of each sheet, the instructions, a sharp scalpel, craft knife, or standing knife, cutting board and super glue or balsa cement. To prepare your model to build, first mark each of the parts on a sheet using the SE5 parts list guide. You can do this in a light pencil or rub it off or as you go along. To remove each piece in order, use your knife and gently cut away the tabs holding the sections of balsa into place. First parts to remove are parts 1A and 1B, main fuselage sides. Inside of these there are several parts which we'll need later, so remove those parts and just lay them safely to one side. With parts 1A and 1B removed, next we'll remove parts 2A, which forms the cross section of the fuselage and the lower wing supports. Following on part 3A, which is the front of the cockpit, including the dials, and part 4A, which is the rear of the cockpit. Now, from the edge of one of your sheets, cut a simple 90 degree angle to use as a guide. And then, beginning with part 3A, which fits here, just forward of the cockpit former, Slide it into this tab here. If necessary, just very gently trim away any excess. You can also sand this down with a file, just so that the tabs slot into the slot as easy as possible. Don't make it too loose though. And then just carefully drop them in place. And using your little 90 degree, make sure that they are angled correctly and then glue along your first edge with your boss cement, or in this case super glue. Let that dry for a moment and then move on to part 2A which fits slightly forward of here into the rear of the two slots on the bottom of the fuselage. Slide the wing support arm through, up as far as possible, and then again checking with your 90 degree. Hold that in position like so, and making sure it's fully up, glue along that edge, and hold until secure. The next part to fit is part 4A, which begins the front of the tail section, fitting in behind the cockpit. Again, ensure you've got a 90 degree in there. Move it forward until you're happy. Make sure it's flush down so that the bottom is the bottom of the fuselage and that the tab is guiding it in line with the fuselage side there. Once you're happy with it, glue the section in place. Check that it's drying correctly. and that you've got a good seal the whole way along. And then move along to part 5A, which forms the base of the nacelle or nose section. This slots into the tab just on the front there and should fit firmly down and in line. This one can be a little bit tricky as there is no front tab slot. So align it as it needs to be. Use your 90 degree to hold it in place and then glue where the tab comes into the fuselage along the front end. Allow it to set for a moment for gluing along the inside firmly in place. like 
back to. Once these sections have set, you can start by fitting part 1B, the opposing side of the fuselage. Just dry fit that into place over the existing fuselage cross sections, making sure that all of the tabs fit in and that the sections are aligned correctly. As you see, the tabs on both sides should line up fairly straight and flush. Make sure that they are proportional on both sides. And begin by gluing the fuselage cross section here, part 2A, as that is going to be your strongest point. Just run a little super glue around it and then move on to 3A which is the front of the cockpit former. Now, the forward part of the SE5 is very straight, so attach the lace cell nose here, and remember to glue inside of the tabs, nice and strong. Moving back along the fuselage, make sure that when you are gluing in part 4A rear, just flex it very slightly backwards so that as it slots into that tab you can align the rear of the fuselage together and then into the tabs like so. That way you won't have any flex in the fuselage. And then once you're happy with it, both ends are meeting parallel, glue it firmly in place. That is the first major step in assembling the fuselage and you can already start to see that the airplane is taking on its characteristic shape. The next part to fit is part 6A, the cockpit floor. Turning the model upside down, take part 6A and fit it between part 3A and 4A, sliding them from the front very delicately until it butts up against 4A and then just presses down very slightly behind part 3A and that should, this flat, form the base of the cockpit and allow you to mount any micro servo gears etc. Now glue this in place along the bottom here and then also where it meets part 4A and part 3A forming a very strong box section in the center of the fuselage, like so. Moving on, 7A and 7B form the two supports in the front of the nacelle and engine bay. These slot in very slightly into these tabs and then push down for a nice snug fit, like so. see here how they fit into these two tabs on the front of the cockpit. Now when you lay your stringers in they will give a slight upwards curve there which is part of the initial shape of the SE5. Now just glue them on each end to hold them in place like so. Allowing them to set you're moving on to the next section along the tail, which is part 8A, try fit this into the two tabs here, and as it is tapering, you may need to slightly sand down the tabs, but in this case it's fitting nicely, and just slide it down into place with the tail sections tapered together to know that you're getting a nice curvature to your fuselage, then glue along both of those inside edges, there, ensuring that you are down to the same depth inside of the fuselage. The next part of it is part 9A, which forms the rear of the cockpit. This has tabs here which fit into the back of the cockpit cutout here, 
and place it in like so to the very rear. Make sure that it's seated down. You may need to slightly trim away below the tap, just make sure that it fits in snug. And once it's flush on both sides, just glue it on the rear there to the fuselage. And then hold it in place while it dries. And we'll move on to building the tail section. In assembling the tail section, you will need parts 10A, 11A and B, 12A and 13A, the tail horizontal. So taking the tail vertical, part 10A, slot the tab and the tail horizontal into the lower part of this shape here. Pushing it all the way back until flush. Do not glue at this point. The next part you will need is part 12A, which is this triangular shape with a cutout in it. This will go over the top of the horizontal tail section into the upper part of the slot. Gently slide it backwards until it holds the tail vertical in place. Now, taking part 11A or B with the diagonally cut section, lower, tapering upwards towards the back of the fuselage, align it with the cutout hole in part 10A. Perfectly vertical, almost butting up against the horizontal, and then glue firstly along the back edge, then the lower edge, and the front edge. Part 11A and 11B are going to form the under support and help make sure that the horizontal is perfectly horizontal. Flipping it over fit part 11B and you want to fit this as a perfect reverse again with the tapered edge downwards fitting over the hole and tail section and again go around the lower edges. You can, at this point, also reinforce the tail skid by running a little glue along the cut edge, front and back, just to give it more strength. Now, with 11, A and B in place, gently press down on the top of part 12, A, which will push down the tail horizontal. From there, you can check you've got a 90 degree So you're absolutely happy with it. Do it to parts 11A and B, and also to 10A, the upright. Make sure this is a strong bond, and also here to the bottom of 12A. With that dry, turn it over, and then glue along where part 12A meets. Both 10A, the upright, and 13A the horizontal. If there is any space here, just gently curve it inwards until you get the right joint. That is your tail section, ready for mounting into the fuselage. As you can see, the ta tapered section of the fuselage will come like so, and they're parallel with 11A and B. Just taper in the ends of the fuselage using Part 12A as a guide for alignment just on the inside. I'm pitching it, align the center of 10A down the middle of the fuselage, push it down tight, and glue the ends of the fuselage meet, and also where the horizontal tail plane comes into contact with the rear of the fuselage. Make sure you hold that until it is totally dry. The next parts fit are part 14A, 15A, the yoke, and the two rear fuselage stringers. So starting out with part 14A, just dry fit this here into the raised section behind the fuselage with that tab slotting in there, into the 
top of that fuselage and backwards. Now, you'll see here that 14A is longer than it should be. Now, in line with the top of the slot in 10A, just gently mark it and then trim that part flush. Hit it again, like so, into its spot. Press it down where you want it. And glue it foremost to the rear of the fuselage, to the top of that fuselage profile. Moving backwards, pressing it down into place, gluing it, and then finally to where it meets the tail section, just to make sure that it's aligned and allow it to go properly. If you want to fit part 15A, the yoke or control stick, that's going to go down through the cockpit between the two foot pedals and into that little rectangle there. Just dry fit it from the bottom to make sure that it fits securely. If necessary, just slightly trim away some of it so that it fits in better. Just flatly peeling it away using the side of your blade or a file. And very carefully down through the cockpit and into place. Then positioning it as you want it, slightly forward or backwards, using the holes in the side of the cockpit. Make sure that it is where you want it, and then glue it through the bottom and in place. Of course this part is optional, you can leave it out if you want a more functional model. Right, so I've got it discarded slightly to one side. Then the two fuselage stringers fit here, going backwards and finishing before the rear of the fuselage. Now, these do press slightly down to continue that contour there. So, first glue just into these tabs here, place the stringer aligned with the back of the cockpit and then bend it slightly downwards just with a little pressure from one finger so that it sits in the those contours and allow it to glue securely. Repeat the process on the other side. Fitting down like so. With the fuselage section semi complete, it's time to lay it aside and begin on the wing sections. You will need parts 16A and 16B, in which you can see the landing gear slots and the lack of ailerons. These will have to be built as mirror images of each other. Cut them out of the wood and then just gently trim away any little notches or anything. Remove all of the wing profiles. On the SE5A all of the wing profiles used are the same. So, beginning with your starboard wing, take your first wing profile and just dry fit it into place there on the inside of the wing, aligned with the center of the rectangular cutout, and then in the slot, push it forward as far as possible, so that the cutaway section there is in line with that section at the front. This will be the same on all of the wing profiles in order to make sure that the center spire will be aligned. Now, glue it first at the front, then at the back and along where the wing profile meets the wing in the center here. Once that's set you want to take your next wing profile and your 90 degree corner and put it two slots inwards 
aligning it again forward and using your 90 degree corner to guide it. So with the tail section in place, between the two holes there, align it, use the 90 degree, glue it first with the front with just a spot of glue and then on the rear as well. Repeat the process moving along the wing, leaving a two gap, butting up forward using your 90 degree there. Go front, here, It's important that these are all aligned as you're going to put the main wing spar down the center. You're also going to fit in the top wing support struts, which are going to glue in part to these. So getting alignment right is paramount. At this stage, you will also see the wing bracing or threading holes here and here. If you want to, you can just reinforce those with a little glue along the top. These are where you're going to eventually thread in your wing bracing. Yeah. Just reduce that a little bit to get into that corner there. Keep the alignment the whole way through and then butt in at the front. Remember 90 degrees throughout. And then the final profile is going to sit butted up to the front, allowing a little bit of space there and be guided by this cutout here. And then glue to the front and to the cut out for strength and just along that little tail section there. That will give you an idea of the wing. Now, before going any further, build the opposing wing, the port side wing. Lay these out next to each other as total mirror images. This way you can make sure that you have a left wing, and a right wing or a port and a starboard wing of the plane. And then when you build it, Again, make sure you're aligning to the front. And then build the same wing the entire distance along. With the two opposing wings complete, the next part you want to fit is part 17A. Now part 17A, B and C are all the same. However, on part 17A, you're going to need to trim these two small tabs here. Part 17A is going to fit into these slots at the bottom of the fuselage. In order to do so, fit flushly, lay the piece flat, and then just carefully trim these two tabs out of the way. Like so. Then Trial fit it into the bottom of the fuselage. Like so. With it sitting flush, glue it in place along the outside, on both sides, and run a little glue to support the strength of it. Like so. completed wings are going to rest like so and you will need to trim away part 2a with the wing extensions just here so measure how much you're going to need to trim away and then using your blade and a vertical cut slowly Add 
hamlets. Until the bottom of the part comes into alignment with the fuselage. As you can see now, <coughs> bottom of the wing will just touch up against the fuselage like so. Now, you want to align. the spar slots with part 2A just sitting in front of it and you can now dry fit the spar into the top of the wing like so lay the wing flat bring the fuselage into place Check the alignment like so, all the way, cut out the fuselage of the wing spar. Leaning the fuselage over to one side, again making sure that line is correct. Glue first to the fuselage, then all the way along the wing joint, and where the spar sits is the top of each wing profile. Hold until dry. With the first wing in place, turn the model, again angling it slightly towards, trim the spars as needed, and then align both wings straight against each other. You can, of course, use an extra bit of wood just to check your alignment, give you an idea. And don't forget, both wings will curve inwards. And then glue firstly along that inside edge to the support. And then all the way along the main wing spar, aligning it with that glue support and binding it strongly to it. Into the tops of all of the wing profiles. and holding it until it's dry. With the lower wing in place, you can see how the interior formers of the fuselage form the shape of the wings and the angle required. You can also now reinforce the support cross section here and glue along the inside of the wings here, just for some added strength. Laying the completed model aside for now, you will need parts 19A, 17B and C and these inner large profiles which are wing profile B, there are four of this type, they slot over the wing support beams. Now <clears throat> keep these loose and you may want to run a little super glue along the sides of these just to give them a little more strength if they are wing support spars. With the front of the wing center marked by the two holes position the wing profiles to fit over 17b like so and into the interior side of the cutout let's have a look at the way the profile curves towards the front and then with 17c just slot that under the back by lifting it slightly and again, down like so. Another type B wing profile fits on the other side. Leave this all in loose for now. Don't glue it until you're 100% happy with the fit. And if you do need to trim any of it, just very carefully carve it away with a Stanley knife or balsa knife. With those two pieces in place, glue just the front of profiles B to the inside of that rectangle there. Let the front dry in place. Make sure you don't get any glue on the 
part 17 B and C and then glue in the rear of the two wing profiles just tack them in place for now let those set a little bit you'll see how the grid formation forms a support now with the remaining two wing profiles type B slide them over these sections on the outside of that rectangle there again up to the front glue on the front glue on the rear and the same on the opposing side what this does is it forms a strong bond for the wing support which will then latch on to the top of the struts above the cockpit see how parts 17 B and C pass through the wing profiles once you're happy with those glue everywhere but these profiles and the wing supports 17 B and C come into contact you want to make a very nice strong bond here and also along the top edges just for that strength like so glue them into the tabs there this really is an area you need to emphasize building a lot of strength into because it will support your top wings and attach them to the fuselage. Now at this point the wing spacing diverges slightly. There is one remaining fish that's going to go here and the spacing is going to change down the wing. Again use your 90 degree angle to get it perfectly right and lay it in place just on the outside of these rope holes and then glue as you'd expect these small holes are left for rigging the plane and the spacing spaces out here because the lower struts are going to come through here it also means there's going to be less for you to cut away if you are converting the ailerons now when you move on to building the second wing same process again just to guarantee that you are building an opposite number of the airplane. Lay everything in place, count that you've got the right profiles, and you can use the opposite wing as a guide for your spacing, but you can also use a hold. Just absolutely make sure that it is a mirror image before starting, and of course, butt up against the front, glue front rear. And then, of course, when it does come together, that will be the correct wing for port and starboard. With the two opposing wings completed, it's time to fit the centre section, which goes into these little jigsaw tabs here, and then angles very slightly. See as that fits in there, the wing has to angle upwards give a correct dihedral. Now by dry fitting just make sure that you have a nice fit in there. If it doesn't quite fit you may need to very very slightly trim away or just shave the very edges of these two support bins. There you are. And if you see here on this one I'm going to very slightly trim that inner edge there just to get a much better fit for as much strength as possible. Now I'm going to lay the wing flat, push the part in and then ease up at an angle and I'm going to glue support section 17 B and C to the wing just to get that amount of strength in it. And once that's dry I'm going to glue strongly as possible along that seam everywhere it connects and where the wing connections touch the first wing profile here. Now I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to repeat the process with the other side. Now the trickiest part of attaching the opposing wing is that you need to hold the entire structure at a slightly elevated angle 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply roll my scalpel under the wing to support it so that the centre of the wing is angled as well as the opposing side of the wing and part 17, B and C remain flat. Now I'm going to glue those in place to the wing surface strongly as possible, making sure that this joint is nice and sealed. I'm going to glue that joint as well. And I'm going to glue to the wing profiles here. Now it's crucial that you get this perfectly flat and that you get a nice bond along the whole wing section. If you did want to extend just how strong it is, you can always put some paper underneath here glue it in place and that'll add a little bit extra strength to it. Now you can see that both wings have an upwards dihedral and when that does sit on the aircraft it will follow the dihedral of the lower wings. With the top wing now glued solidly you can now put in the wing spars according to the list. Now these fit into the top of each of the wing profiles Make sure you get a good fit into the top and all the way along. They will protrude slightly beyond and they will also sit slightly lower. Begin first of all by gluing to the inside edge there, make a nice strong bond. Moving along, holding it in place, a little touch of glue. All the way along. And then of course this little piece of protruding can be trimmed back or you can just slightly break it and then arc it downwards and of course trim it back if you want to or of course you can just simply trim it flush to the profile if you are bending it like that get it in place and just Touch a little glue on the brake and on the end there. And then of course the same on the opposing wing. Just to give it the right amount of strength. Glue it again to the centre to get that nice central bond. And moving along. flash just a little bit of glue that is the top wing complete apart from the Lewis gun which will mount on with the details at the very end we'll lay that aside for now and finish off the fuselage details finishing the fuselage details and also the motor kit this is being done as a rubber free flight kit this is the standard motor package that comes with the kit. Contained inside of it you will have the propeller, obviously, two wooden bearings, two matchsticks, a axle for the landing gear, a toothpick if needed, a cotter or split pin, and your rubber band. Now you can upgrade the rubber band, this is just a space saver, you can put in some free flight rubber in there, but this will work nice for little demonstration flights. Now the first part you're going to need to fit into the model is part 23A, which fits over the front of the very nose of the aircraft, like so. so Align that the way you want it, and then glue it very strongly down the middle. Having this double thickness will create a strength in the front. You want in the aircraft, in case of any nose dives, or also to take the pressure of the rubber pulling back on it. The next part is to fit a matchstick retainer for the rubber band. Now I'm going to fit this right here behind the instrument panel 
You can, of course, fit it further back for longer rubber all the way up to the tail section here, but make sure you do balance your weight correctly. So what I'm going to do is, having looped the rubber band over the matchstick, I'm going to push it through in place. The reason we haven't put the top onto the nacelle is so that you do have the space to access. And then just align very carefully. And then pull your rubber where you want it. Make sure that you have enough space around it. In this case, it's going to push up slightly against the yoke. That's okay. And then I'm going to glue both ends of the matchstick, making sure not to get glue onto the rubber itself. So from that, I can now work the rubber band or free flight rubber through the middle of the fuselage. So it hangs free inside of the nacelle. After that what I'm going to do is gently pull the arms of the quarter pin apart, like so, and feed the end of the rubber through the two arms of the quarter pin. And pull it all the way down into that eyelet. Then I'm going to slip the first wooden bead over the top, bring it down to hold that in place, and just push that through the little propeller receiver to the very front. I want to hold that Protruding very carefully through the middle. The next part that goes over is the second cotter pin, a uh, second wooden bead, and then the propeller itself, making sure that the little tooth is facing outwards. Both arms of the cotter bead through there, and then holding quite firmly, bend one of the cotter bead arms. And now release the rubber band. And then you may need to use some needle nose pliers for this just to get there so that it does catch as it spins. As you can see here, the rubber should be mounted slightly higher. Just make sure that you have the right proportions as you're going through. It obviously, clears all of the subsections inside and spins freely. The next part in the build is to put on the stringers that go over the top of the engine nacelle. So just align those where you want them. You can start at the front or the rear, it doesn't really matter. And then glue them from one end in place and then work your way slowly forward, gluing as you go and making sure you have a fit you're happy with. There will be a lot of protrusion beyond the end, but you're going to trim that back after it's glued in place, which is fine. Then move on to the center, press that in, and glue. Just like so. And of course, finally, your third stringer. Once they're glued, and you're happy with, they're glued and you're happy with them, you can just gently trim them away at the front using a very sharp blade. Just 
like so. Of course, if there are any rough edges, you can just sand them away using a little bit of fine grit sandpaper, or even a nail file works quite well on models of this size. There we go, and that is the top of the nacelle there. Continuing on with the finishing detail of the fuselage, and at this point, if you did want to cover the aircraft, this is a good time to do it, leaving, of course, slots for the upper support beams. Um, as it is, you can do some extra finishing to it. A nail file like this is a fantastic way just to take off some of the little edges and the burrs there, just smooth it around a little bit. Um, you can also go along the front of the wings and things like that. Just gently take off all those rough edges so that when you do cover it, it will smooth down all over the way and give you a very nice finish. And then just check that all of your bonds are right all the way along the aircraft and that everything is solid. Now, there are some details to go on the side of the fuselage, which I'm going to put on now. Obviously, if you are covering it, cover it first and then attach these details. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this little wing tip in here, end of the spar by trimming it, and bending it down, dabbing a little bit of glue on it, exactly as we did with the upper wing spar. The alternative, of course, is just to trim it totally flat, but this creates a nicer wing edge. So, you have the exhaust profile, very typical to the SE5. Um, you can, of course, file that into a nice little round on one side, just easily bringing it down, being careful not to crack the actual material support it at all times and then just shape your profile. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, an edge on here and just clean out these burrs to exactly how I want it and then just dome that front edge there and the trailing edge. Now this of course fits onto the side of the nacelle like so and you can position that with a little bit of variance there obviously the details and the rivet holes in the side will pull it up I'm going to place it like so I'm just going to put a bit of glue behind it just a touch and then pop it on just above that rivet line there with the exhaust trailing back towards the cockpit the next piece is the oil cover, which goes on the opposite side here. Now you can position that where you want. Um, you can paint that once you've got it on top of the covering or leave it the same color as your covering. I'm going to just touch a little bit of glue on and I'm going to put it on at a backwards rate angle just because that's the way I like it to look. And that is pretty much your fuselage complete. You can, of course, put some extra bolt strengthening in the front there. The next little detail I'm going to make up is the machine gun which sits on top of the upper wing. Now this comes in three parts. It has your centre of your machine gun which is supported on the outside by parts 25B and C and the centre of which is part 25A. So these very simply glue onto the side there in line with that front, leaving the little muzzle exposed and the gun cock behind. I'm going to glue it on. Like so on one side, and then the opposite piece straight onto the other side. With this drying in place, I'm going to use a file to give that barrel a rounded look that I want. It will also bring out the circular detail 
in the barrel. Now be very careful not to snap it at this point. So, uh, if you are painting this afterwards, the best thing to do is give it a black undercoat, or just a, a painting of black paint, and then using either a silver or a grey, almost dry brush, just dry brush, to bring out the detail in it and give it that kind of worsened metal look. And give it a bit of an age effect, of course you can go for bronze or whatever take your fancy. Now you can see the, the barrel looks fairly rounded. With the holes bringing out the detail and we can of course bring it further back here just to sort of carve out the profile that you want and that's going to sit on top of the wing above the covering and make a nice little bit of detail right the next part in the assembly is fitting the upright wing struts now these piece together as almost a jigsaw the cutout in the top and bottom, make sure that you have the right ones. Now we're going to work in from these double holes in the lower wing, which mark your rigging points. And we're going to start by fitting the back, like so, which should fit flush here and against the back. Just make sure that it is all the way back against there and sitting up against the wing rib. And now we're just going to very gently tack that in place. With one little drop of glue. And then I'm going to take the front and I'm going to slide that in underneath the wing spot. And then I'm going to slide it backwards until it comes up flush on both sides. And I'm going to tack it in place and here. The other alternative, of course, is to delay putting the wing spar on until this time. And then you can build the whole thing flat and just glue it in place. But if you're covering, this is going to be your best method, having left a flap to cover over the top of. And then just make sure it's very solidly glued. You can also run glue along the wood grain of it, just to give it extra strength, which is always useful in free flight models. And then build the next section. With both of the wing struts in place, we're now going to look at fitting the top wing, which will fit quite slow, slightly just dropping onto the top of those two struts. Now, you want to position this by eyeball using the two gun slots here and just sliding it back and forth until you're happy with it. And you can, of course, measure it all up. Try and get these to be the same distance from the inside rib and then just tack them in place for now. We'll glue them a little more thoroughly in a minute. Like so. Now, the next part you're going to fit are parts 20 and 20B, which are the cockpit support struts. Now, these fit into the holes on the side of the cockpit and into the slots in the top wing. Now, if you just dry fit those in, into those slots. Obviously, if you've already covered the aircraft at this point, you will need to just slice those points out. Depending on how you put the aircraft and the struts together, there will be a slight variation of where these meet, which is fine, so long as they butt up all the way to the top, no problem at all. And they should slide partially into there. And when you're doing it, just put a little bit of pressure on the rear of the wing, look through the slot, make sure that they're in place, and then glue through the slot in the wing. Should form a good strong bond. And then of course into the two slots on the side of the fuselage. Just as it's drying, just hold it, make sure that everything is steady as you want it. And while you're waiting for it to dry, you can just test where you want your machine gun to sit. 
if you need to do any sanding to it, just bring back the fitment of the profile. Now remember that this will stand powered away from the covering of the wing. So leave slots in your covering just to get it through. Or if you're just doing a display model, it's fine as well. And it should just tack together like that. And then very easily glue into place. Now with everything in place, you can start to fit the landing gear just very carefully turn the model over, lay it down like so, and your landing gear are parts 27A and B, like so. The acute end of the triangle will be facing forward and they fit into these slots in the bottom of the wing, like so. Now, what you want to do is just judge the angle you want them to fit at. The wing is already slightly profiled. So, get a good idea for the fitment of this axle and where you want the landing gear itself to fit. And then, once you're happy with it, glue them straight to the wing. Let it set in place. And then, just make absolutely sure that the opposing on the carriage section is at exactly the same angle to your original fitment. Now before turning it over, wait for that to dry thoroughly. You can also just give a little bit of reinforcement to the wing connections here. Make sure you don't press down too hard on the airframe at the moment or you will snap the top wings. Right, the final part to do on the assembly is to fit the tail sections, the control surfaces. Now these can either be glued directly to each other and at a fixed position. I'm going to put a little bit of camera on this. Uh, I'm just going to glue it straight on. You can of course make a little paper hinge which works brilliantly and just glue that overlapping both sides or of course you can thread a hinge which works nicely or some very small mylar micro hinges works well as well Don't forget, of course, to cover this separately if you are converting to micro RC or some form of control. These are the tail control surfaces. As you can see, they slot in just under this triangle here, like so. If you do want them to be controllable, you will have to snip off that inside edge there, but I don't. I'm just going to glue it all the way along. Slightly upwards. thing left to do is to glue the two wheels onto your axle and then fit it. This is done by placing the axle into the provided hole, gluing it in place like so, make sure you don't glue it to the table, putting it through the machine and then gluing the opposing wheel in place and this little bamboo axle will just free spin. On its own. There we are. The decals included in this kit are these cut and peel stickers for the Royal Flying Car. Also included the ACES logo and some more markings. The tricolour for the tail can be cut to size and shape. And of course the roundels for the wing and sides. 
Thank you very much for buying Henson's Flying Machine.